Okay, now that we've got the coolant and the oil drained, we are going to remove the throttle cable. Let me show you where that is. So, if you follow from the firewall, this cable is going to go around and it goes into that. Now, let's see if I can get a good angle on this. What it is, is this guy here, there's a cable coming from there and it goes around here. Now, anytime you want to rev the engine up when you're over here, you just pull on this and it kind of acts as though the cable is being pulled and it'll rev it up. So you'd hear all the hamsters screaming on the wheels when you do that. But we're going to just de disconnect this nut. Uh, you can see that right there and just kind of pull the cable out of the way. All right, one more note on the throttle cable. This is just a 12 millimeter nut. So it was real easy to just get with a 12 meter, millimeter wrench. It's now loose. I want to show you how to unhook the actual cable. Okay, so if you can see uh, what we're going to do is if I loosen that, I'm going to grab this little, you know, cable and then twist it and then this just pops right out. I don't know if you can see that, but you, you can see what it actually looks like and then you can see what you would do. So you want to just line up that cable with this notch right here and then it just pops right out and that's easy. And in theory, this will just come right out of this little fitting. I need to loosen that more. Yeah, I do. Okay. So we spin that nut up the deal a little bit, and there it is, it's out. So just pull, there we go. Go me! All right, throttle cable disconnected. We're going to remove the air cleaner assembly next. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. So mine doesn't have a nut on here. I've put them on there before, but they always come off. I don't know, just because this thing shakes like a beast or what, but uh, you've got these little clamps, they're super simple, you just unsnap them and then uh, pull them off like that, and there's a few of them, there's another one here, another one at the back, and it's a little harder to do right hand, or left handed, or whatever, one handed I should say, and then this guy is already unhooked, there we go, okay, so this is going to pop off, which is really straightforward, and you know what, actually we'll just kick it out of the way, no, let's go ahead and pull it off, so I'm just going to loosen this hose clamp, like so, I'll leave it slightly attached, disconnect, uh, you can see I did that one-handed, so that was easy, throw that in a box, okay, and then here's the air cleaner, pull that off, and then yeah, this, this nut right here, we're going to need to take that off. Turns out it's an 8 millimeter. No problem. Pull that guy out. It's going to disconnect. Okay. So we've got a clamp here. We're going to need to undo that. Um, and then it looks like there's an electrical plug here, so you're just going to pop that little guy off for that sensor, and that's it. Okay, the next step is to remove the vacuum lines. This part freaks me out a little bit, because there's a lot of them. So we're going to the throttle body, uh, throttle body which is under the carburetor here. Uh, so I'm going to just trace these down via video uh, and then I may add more later. The main thing is you just want to have some record, whether it's your cell phone taking pictures or whatever, of where they go so you can get them back. Okay, so things started to get kind of complicated kind of quickly and uh, rather than do each one via video, here's what I'm kind of going to do. Uh, and I would recommend that you do this as well. Uh, I basically started pulling things off that are going to you know, attach it to the engine. However, uh, I'm, I started marking it very clearly. So you can see I labeled the cylinders, one, two, three, and I did that with a paint marker. I also labeled the wires, which are over there. I left them attached to the distributor cap, that's fine, because uh, the distributor cap is still marked. And then, uh, so all the vacuum lines, same deal. There's like a, a line there and a line there, and I've got like two dots on some other ones, and. Things like that. So I basically just started detaching everything. I used color-coded tape, so like this is going to go over here and the blue is going to go um, where the blue one goes. I don't remember, but whatever. I've got tape on plugs and electrical connectors. Uh, there's things that are labeled with markers, so all kinds of stuff. So hopefully I can put it back together that way, um, but it's getting a little too tedious to try to do each one. Uh, I would say that with the vacuum hoses and stuff, 
what I found after breaking a couple loose, some of them have, you know, uh, hose clamp kind of deals uh, where you just pinch them and they come off. Others attach to like little, you know, nipples or whatever. And what I suggest doing is don't just pull on it because that seems to add, when you're pulling this way, it seems to add tension, tighten it. And I, I snapped a couple that way. So what I found was if I twisted it first, then a lot of times they'd come right off. Or if I grabbed a screwdriver and kind of stuck it on the, <clears throat> on the end, and then twisted it, it would kind of push it off from the end without creating any extra tension. So uh, I recommend doing that. Um, so that's where we're at right now. Now I'm taking off the uh, distributor and that's just these little T40, see they're like sort of star shaped ones. So this one's called a T40, it's just the size. Um, this is on like a multi-tool from Harbor Freight. This thing was awesome. I think it came with like three different tools, like two, uh, two Allens and one of these for like $4. So I suggest getting that. Um, and that's where we're at right now. All right, next step is to loosen the alternator belt. Uh, so we're gonna remove it, and so I'll show you. This is the alternator back here, and you'll see that it's, if you can, uh, let's see, can you see that? Yeah. See how it's meant to slide? There's a bolt that goes in here, and then that tightens it, and you slide, in it, slide it to tension it on the belt. So to remove the belt, I had to remove, or loosen this, I actually did remove it, that bolt. I loosened another bolt and there's one down below and then I was able to pull on the alternator, get it nice and loose, and then I'm going to just pull this hose, or hose, this uh, belt right off. And so that's off because we're going to need to be pulling things away. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to remove all the little bolts on this water pump pulley. So there's just, we're just going to loosen those guys up and take this belt, this pulley off. And then also the crank pulley, this is the same one earlier that we were matching up. There's a bunch of bolts around the outside. These are 10 millimeter up here, and I believe these are eight. So I'm gonna remove those. Okay, so after some uh, getting messed around by this car, I've figured out how to do this uh, crank pulley. So basically, I didn't have good access from the top, um, but I figured it out. So if you're underneath the car, so this is the, the big pulley that we've been adjusting to get to top dead center and all that. If you look inside there, you'll see that there's four eight millimeter bolts around the outside and then one big, what was it, a 17 in the middle. So this is how we were supposed to crank the engine. Now I couldn't get at this at first because this big plastic cover sits like, you know, this to just keep, you know, gunk out of the belts and all that. So it's just these little, I don't know where are they at. Oh, they're all gone now. Oh, it's these little guys, little clips that hold it in. Oh, can you see that? Yeah, so you just pull this center part out if you have a little tool to do it, and then that will collapse and you can pull it out. So not a huge deal. You could also just break them and then zip tie this thing back on. That's fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use the big 17 millimeter in the middle to hold it while I loosen the four other ones, and we're going to pull that pulley off. We don't want to loosen that middle one. We just want to uh, use it to keep it from moving out of top dead center. Uh, there's some better lighting, so you can see there's actually five of these eight millimeter bolts around the outside of the 17. So I'm just holding the 17, uh, you know, like I was gonna crank it tighter and that way I can, you know, use it to apply pressure while I apply Lefty Lucy to these little guys. So, so far so good. Okay, so getting this off, once it, it was kind of, you know, wedged on there, uh, you know, just because of the tension on the belt. What I found to be good was if I took a screwdriver and you gotta be careful because there's this plastic cover here. You don't wanna pry against that. You don't wanna pry against this plug. But off of this bolt, you see that? There's a bolt there. I stuck that in and then was able to just pry that and it just popped right off. So good news for us. Now I'm gonna just, uh, there we go. Ta-da! Pulley is done. So now that that pulley is off, we're gonna take off the timing cover. That's this plastic beast right here and it has you know, bolts here, here, there's some down below. I think there's eight or 10 of them. I believe they're eight millimeter. So I'm gonna get to work on that. All right, timing cover's off and they were 10 millimeter bolts, so I was wrong about that, but we got one there, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know if I count, <laughs> two, four. Yeah, eight, and then this one in the middle, which is a little bit tricky to find, but it's not really, it's fine. There's the tiny cover. You can see it's been eaten up by some belts and stuff. Whatever, I'm gonna paint this before I put it back on because I'm fancy like that, but there you go. All right, next thing I did was mark the uh, timing belt 
So I just made a mark on a tooth and on the belt, and I noted which way it's rotating, and then I did the same down there. Uh, you can see I made a mark on that little, that little thing on the block, and then also on that tooth, so I should be able to line it up pretty good afterwards. And I've been just putting bolts, kind of threading them back in to whatever I took them out of, uh, so I don't have to keep track of like hundreds of, belt, of bolts. Um, you can do what you want. All right, next step is we remove the exhaust manifold, or the headers in this case. So this is the header heat shield, and these are just 10 millimeter bolts, so I already loosened them. They were fairly easy to get to and loosen. Oh, awesome, I just lost one. I'll find it. The next thing we do is take off the four... Valve cover bolts. Valve cover bolts. 10 millimeter wrench. 10 millimeter wrench. Just like that. Like that. Pretty easy. So we'll take them all the way out, of course. So under each of those 10 millimeter bolts is one of these little, uh, you know, oil sealing washer deals. I just took a small screwdriver and pried them up, and then the valve cover just lifts off. Hooray! Look at that camshaft. Oh, watch out! It's drippy. <laughs> 